In this tutorial, I will show you how I created this medieval street scene in Blender. And I'll also show you how I exported this to the Unreal Engine 5 game engine. So the total production time was around 70 days. And this included working on all the buildings, working on the street environment, adding the props in the scene. And after all that work, I did some real-time editing in the viewport. And with some compositing, I was able to tweak the colors so I had this pretty image. So all assets came from Polyhaven. This is a free platform for models, textures and skies. You don't need any registration, just click on your asset and you can download it. We also offer a plugin that you can download and install in Blender and you have all the assets in your uh, viewport. So you click on the asset you want, you drag this in your scene and you put it somewhere where you want it and uh, it's done. So you all have the node setup and textures applied. So that's really easy to go. So this video has five parts. So let's jump to part number one and that is doing your research, very important. So the first thing I did was creating a Trello page. I collected some sketches, uh, photo, old photographs, um, also some paintings and old maps. And I added all of this content on the Trello page. So it's very easy for me to find references when I needed it. So part number two is making a scene block out. So when I did the research, I made a bunch of photos from the scene and I imported this in Reality Capture. And Reality Capture made this 3D reconstruction of the scene that allows me to make this block out. So I imported a plane and started to extrude this and aligning this plane to the 3D scan. It's a little bit time consuming to get this right, but the result is so great that you have a one-on-one -on -one copy of the real thing. So that is pretty great. So when finished with the block out, I started to sculpt the terrain. Very important when you want to have a natural look that doesn't look so straight. Next part was blocking out all the buildings. It was a total of 11 buildings. So having a good block out saves you a lot of time because you know a little bit what part you want to make and what part you want to skip. For example, the building I'm creating right here only needs a front design and this building on the side has a front and a left side. So I'm spending some time on the details that I want to create in the final version of the scene. So when everything is done, I just depict a color in the scene. So uh, that works for picking a composition and after removing the photo scan, you can see that all buildings are in the scene and they represent a real building in the photo scan. So then I grab the camera and picking a nice composition. And then we arrive on part number three, and that is constructing the buildings. So I start with a simple uh, cube and I deform it, cutting some holes, making the ornaments on it. Uh, using some reference files and then doing the shader um, starting sometimes very simple but then I started to make it more and more complex for this building I photo scan some ornaments that give some realistic touch in the final result and I jump to other buildings uh, this was the main buildings on the corner and the shader looks simple but everything in this setup is displaced so I will show you how that works. In this part, I had a photo um, with a bow and I used a displaced texture to took some bricks from it and making this bow with all different colors. Uh, and in the final result, you could see that it is a displaced arch ornament. Uh, when you get close to the render, you can really see it is displaced with a sandstone border and a bow and the original texture. What is pretty complex to create, but in the final result, it looks amazing. So some buildings are really complex like this one because it has a left and a front side. Uh, same here, all types of arch ornaments. It has a very complex front facade. Uh, and for the side wall, I mixed three types of textures, a dark one, a white one, and a red one. And they all have a different sort of displacement map. What makes the shader very satisfying. So I just want to show you some more buildings like this one. I had just a glimpse of a sketch and I tried to recreate it. 
Uh, this was another building on the side which is pretty visible and it has a very nice sort of ornament on the top of the windows and I made a photo scan of that and mapped this on the building and yeah this is just simple parts what makes your building special. And then we arrive at part number four and that is constructing the base. So I started with blending two cobblestone textures and the hard part in the scene it has a bow bridge so I had to find this in real life. Uh, I made a photo scan, imported this in reality capture and I was able to bake this out, project this on the bridge. So I started surrounding this with some sandstone blocks and then importing all the main structures in the scene. So slowly uh, the scene gets some shape uh, in the scene. In the background you can see I added some placeholders because I wasn't finished with the scene yet. Then I imported the trees and the sunlight and started to play with the uh, environment lighting. And I also updated the base layer with adding some extra textures, also some strokes for some nice details. I spent some time on working on these side steps. That's nice for the composition in the scene that it adds some extra depth when making a render. So speaking of rendering, let's go to render the scene in part number five. So when making the first render, the background was very empty. Uh, and I had to make some new buildings uh, from some reference files to fill this empty spot with two nice looking buildings. So when they were finished, I imported them in Blender and when looking at the composition, it looks way better. So when making a new render, the left and the middle part of the render looks a little bit empty. So I went to the original location and I was able to photo scan some side step for the buildings, imported these in reality capture and baked them out so I could easily import them in the main scene. So I needed some sandstone border stones to blend them easily with the cobblestone floor. And then I imported the characters and animals and then it was time to make the final render. So now it's finally time to export the scene to Unreal Engine 5 in part number 6. So I choose to bake out all the textures because the shader was very complex and I had some issues exporting this to the engine. So I baked the diffuse, normal and the displacement map for the base and all the buildings and then I export this to the Unreal Engine. So after doing that, I aligned all the buildings, same as I did in Blender, and then I had a real time scene. So from the top view, you can see that the rear is empty and that was just an optimization thing. And when you get really close to the buildings, you can see that everything is displaced. And this was only possible because Unreal Engine 5 now has Nanit and that allows you to import high resolution meshes. So as a little extra, I added some weather effects. So I added some rain. My favorite weather effect was the snow because the buildings looks the best with some snow on the rooftops. So thanks for watching this video and I hope you have some fun with working on Blender environments.